Hello everyone, my name is Beagle, welcome back to another episode here from the Minecraft Let's Play series, episode 86, how are you guys doing? Hopefully you're having a wonderful day today. Um, we've been playing on this world for over four years now, I believe, and still there are a bunch of things that we never even really tried ever doing. One of them I'm trying to attempt over here right now, I can't see the target block through the flames anymore though. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> that took way too long. But we got it, bullseye! I gotta say, wind charge flying is really fun if you can actually learn how to do it. <laughs> okay, I messed it up over there, so I'm gonna lose momentum here. Dang it. Um, but you can do some pretty fancy stuff with it. If you can, like, get a good speed going. Not like that. Kinda like this, and then who? And then who? You can see that you can actually go pretty quick if you do it right. I never crafted a crafter using a crafter. But now I did. We've never had a sniffer pot. But now we do. Probably a good time to mention that I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> uh, I should be able to make this. Yep. Uh, please. Okay. Ah, caves and cliffs. <laughs> Whew, okay. I'm alive. Everything's good. Don't ruin the moment, zombie. No, I'm enjoying <laughs> I'm enjoying my little sand show. How freaking dare you, man? And he dies. Oh. Still going. Alright, I think it's time to stop stalling. <laughs> I have a pretty pretty big idea for today's project in mind. It's not going to be a particularly big or well. My, some of you might find this interesting, maybe, I hope. Um, I really want to get good with the crafter. I think it's a really unique, fun redstone component that's gonna be, of course, very useful in terms of inventories and stuff with bigger farms. Um, but you can also do some fun stuff with it. I want to get good with it, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna probably try one of the game's more complicated recipes, and we're gonna try automating it to the extent that it is automatable too. If that makes any sense. Uh, we're gonna be making a cake factory. The question right now is, can I do this from memory? <laughs> I think it's two sugars, an egg in the middle, three wheat at the top? No, milk at the top, cause the white... yeah, the white frosting, that's what that is. So this is the recipe we're trying to automate to the... You, as far as automation can actually take this recipe, right? Some of these do require player input, um, I don't think you can get wheat unless you do like some fancy villagers stuff, like stealing the wheat from them as they're harvesting them, if that even is possible, I'm not sure. Because I think once they pick it up, they turn it to bread. So we do have to manually do wheat, and we do also manually have to do milk. Um, you can't. You can't milk cows with dispensers yet, right? That is not a thing. Yeah, I figured that it wouldn't work. <laughs> so you do have to do the cow manually as well. So let's try and do this together here, right? How do we achieve this composition of items in the crafter? Um, that is a really fun thing that they decided to do, um, as far as like actually automating recipes goes in the future, is you need to figure out some kind of way to put them into the crafter in a specific order, so each time you automate something, it's like a little puzzle that you have to do, right? <laughs> and I think that's that's pretty fun, depending on what kind of recipes they make in the future. Um, so yeah, we need three milk buckets first to go into the crafter, then we need one sugar. Oh, rain. <laughs> one sugar, then one egg, then one sugar to go in, and then the three weeds. The way I'm thinking about this is we could have a hopper, Anywhere, could be at the top, could be at the side over here. I think I'm gonna do the top for the time being. So of the possible methods, this one I do like on paper the most. Uh, you're gonna need to have a little bit of like backlog of items for this to function. Uh, but even then, I think it could be pretty good still. We have three droppers, three droppers, three droppers pointing into three hoppers, which point into the crafter. Um, and then what you do is you feed the items in the order that you want them in the crafter into the droppers and then you just activate all of them once and at once. And that basically puts the recipe into the crafter, then we just need to tell the crafter to craft something once it is filled and that's how we get the cake in theory. 
Surely there's gonna be something that doesn't work about it. <laughs> in fact, I can already see the issue. If the item from this hopper gets put into this spot, it's going to allow an item from the hopper about to go into this slot and it's gonna ruin the whole sequence. So this doesn't actually work. Dang it. <laughs> I thought we were onto something there. Um, another solution, right, would be to make a smart system which knows how many things are in the crafter and depending on how many things are in the crafter is going to allow certain items to pass uh, but that's going to be a big redstone contraption i don't know if i have the patience for it <laughs> i want this to be a one episode kind of done and done thing so hmm we could also do a little bit of Something like, oh yeah, we could do a chain of droppers, nine droppers. How do, am I ever going to place this? I have no idea. <laughs> Something like this, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that way you can feed the items in. Uh, can you do it? <laughs> okay, I'm experimenting here with some stuff. Uh, this is gonna be pretty rough to figure out actually though, I think. I did some fancy lollygagging around here. Built some contraptions. <laughs> um, this is probably gonna break horribly here, but I'm gonna test it out anyway. I'm gonna see what happens. Oh! Okay, it made a cake. And I need it to shut off when it's done. So, redstone torch. It shoots out the buckets as well. I didn't know that actually. Okay, let's give it a full test because I had the ingredients in here originally. Oh no, it doesn't yet, yet work. Okay, before I <laughs> before I just keep talking about this nonsensical contraption, I'm gonna explain what's actually happening here. I call this thing the cake sequencer, and you can actually use this for any recipe in the game that exports some sort of weird complex issue like the cake, where you need specific items at specific places. So we could probably use this to craft what's kind of difficult. I don't know, end crystals? Maybe respawn anchors? Maybe some stuff like that? Anything that has multiple items? You could probably use something like this. We have two rows of redstone repeaters. These ones are here to lock these hoppers. So we only want these hoppers to release a singular item every single time the machine is activated. So that's what this set of repeaters is four. I just haven't hooked it up yet, but I'm gonna do that in a moment. This set over here, that's just gonna repeatedly fire the droppers. So each dropper is going to get powered and it's basically gonna push the whole recipe in one thing at a time. Um, with other uh, recipes, you might want to have a some sort of little circuit that tells the crafter that when it is ready, it should fire. But here I'm just having it on a clock because the you cannot do anything with milk right so it's not going to accidentally craft something else it's just going to keep getting powered until the cake recipe is in at which point it's going to shoot this is going to activate and it's going to shut off the whole system via this t flip-flop over here i believe this is hope that makes sense <laughs> okay and there's just a simple redstone clock which actually is activated when we need it to so when the t flip-flop is on this pushes this block over here and that uh, activates the clock. It's very loud, it's very, <laughs> very inelegant of this solution of mine, but uh, it's, I think this is gonna be good, question mark. All we really need now is a make cake button, <laughs> a make cake button, which is going to be over here. There we go. That's going to make the whole thing function, basically. Uh, and I think now I just need to hook this thing up kind of annoyingly to this spot over here. Okay, I am about to comment the very first test of the thing, <laughs> the proper first test. Uh, just to explain, we have one of each ingredient in the barrels. The idea is that these are going to store a lot of uh, basically 
unzipped cakes, <laughs> which is this swing is going to unzip into the world. And yeah, now I'm gonna press the button. And what should happen, right, I added a little monostable circuit here, by the way, don't worry about it, it's gonna make it work. Um, I'm gonna press this button, this is going to activate, and we're gonna see this thing fill up in real time. And once it fills up and it creates the cake, it is going to shut itself off. No, well, the freaking things are bugged. <laughs> They're being diagonally powered by this block. Really? <laughs> So this is powering the droppers when they're not supposed to be powered. They need to get a block update to realize that they are not actually being powered. However am I gonna do that? Yes, the whole thing is bricked. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is that it actually works. It's just releasing a single item at a time. No, where's my milk? What? Huh? Huh? <laughs> what? No, it doesn't work at all. Like at all. Uh, uh. All of redstone was easy, everyone would do it, right? So I'm gonna experiment with some more stuff. Like with ho a dropper pointing into a hopper. Nine of them specifically, once again, for the nine separate ingredients. We're gonna have a line like this, and I'm gonna just try activating all of these with observers like this. Never lose hope, guys, it's possible. <laughs> we can figure this out, it's just going to be difficult. But life is all about difficulties. So, here, I mean, here, there we go. Put an observers like so. Okay, now I have a different design here. It's way smaller. <laughs> uh, here's the whole thing behind this one, okay? Um, instead of having them like be sorted into droppers and then pushed forward, instead we're gonna put them into these hoppers and then we just activate the droppers in sequence. Um, that way, the first item is put there, the second one there, 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 there. And there also, there is a bit of a delay so it's going to take a second before all of the things get into the crafter, uh, but there should be enough of a gap for these hoppers to not like accidentally uh, skip turns and like the item that's supposed to be last push gets pushed into the fraud. It should be in sequence. I'm gonna break this block. That's gonna activate the chain of repeaters, which these observers are going to detect, and that's how they're gonna do the sequence of droppers. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna test it here. Oh. <gasps> it works! Except there was a polished... <laughs> there was a polished stuff there. But it worked! Oh my goodness, really? <laughs> this works? Okay. W one more test. Gonna put a repeater here. Whoa! <laughs> you see this on the F3 screen? This one... Is being powered. It's powered. That's why it's not shooting. What is it powered by? <laughs> it's... <laughs> Oh, I hate droppers so much, man. They're so frustrating. What in the world is powering you that is not powering the others? If I give you a blog update, it's gonna fix you. But that doesn't excuse you for being a douche. I do wonder if this is gonna work, but probably not. What? <laughs> oh no! Oh no, I spent two hours looking for a problem or for a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. It's not night time, let me sleep. I need to cover myself in a blanket and cry. Oh, I thought, oh, I thought the hoppers would mess up the sequence, but I don't. This works. It's so small. <laughs> No! Why is this so beautifully small and compact? Oh... Okay, that's fine. All of these are also turned off now, so we avoided the other issue that we had moments ago. <sighs> I'm probably gonna keep most of the stuff that I talked about redstone-wise in this video here, just so we can go along on a journey of, you know, figuring stuff out together. Um, 
I thought there was a little bit more intricacy to this, but apparently it's actually really simple. Alright, but that doesn't solve all of our problems, now the actual difficult part might begin. Uh, we need to get the specific ingredients into the specific parts of the system, so we need a cow milk thingamajig for these three hoppers, then we need sugarcane, a sugarcane farm for these two, a chicken farm for this one, and then we need a wheat farm for the last three here. Uh, so that, that, that actually isn't too bad, we just need to get some hoppers over here. Uh, probably... We're probably gonna have the cow thing a little bit like there. We're gonna try to make this like a big factory building. Uh, maybe without a interior, actually. But kind of just like you walk around and there's different facilities in the outside walls that you can attend to. It's kind of what I'm imagining. Whoa, so here is, we have a little setup over here. Um, this is here to signalize that we are missing an ingredient so that we don't accidentally break the system when we click the button. It's gonna just make a huge jumble of stuff in there. So we're gonna have a little redstone line through a comparator detecting whether there are the necessary items in the system. And if yes, then it's going to be lit up like this. And if no, then it's going to be... Uh, well, the rest of the lamp is going to be off and we're going to be able to see that we should not run the system probably. As far as the individual pieces of automation go, I have made a little setup over here. This is going to be making sugar, uh, which is going to split it with this double chest into these separate droppers over there. So that's going to be fine. Then we need the cow. The cow is going to be a little wacky. But it could be as simple as just simply getting just a couple hoppers like this, make a little two by two, and this is where the cow is. And then we want to have probably like a little fence thing over here, a little stairway to get to the cow. Maybe over here is where it's going to begin. And you're gonna milk the cow and you're probably gonna fill up your inventory because the bucket is non-stackable, right? The milk bucket. So we're just going to spit out the milk buckets on the ground, which is going to be on these half slabs, which is where the hoppers are. So we're just going to go quickly into the system, right? Makes sense? And after that, we just need to uh, extract the buckets and put them into a convenient spot, preferably around there somewhere. Okay, for the sake of brevity and your sanity, we're gonna skip over the majority of the little finicky details to finish the job here. Um, but here's the functional product, I hope. Let me double check if it's often broke. Again, I've been testing it uh, every once in a while. But it should... Yeah, five cakes. Just wait a moment. And... Six cakes. Yeah, and you, you can keep pressing it and making more cakes. Uh, this is how it looks. I added composters above all the hoppers, so there's a little bit less lag. All the redstone lights are currently hooked up. All of these are showing lob materials. Uh, we just need to wait for the system to slowly back up over time to create a little bit of a reserve, and then these are gonna light up to signify that there's enough of these things. Um, what else? There's a little system that returns the buckets. This little filter takes out the buckets, puts them into this dropper elevator and puts them here next to the cow for us to take and milk with. Uh, we have a little sugarcane thing here, which is generating sugarcane over time. This is converting the sugarcane into the sugar. This is where the chicken is making the eggs. So yeah, this thing is done. Now we just need to cover it up somehow. <laughs> uh, haven't really thought of how we're gonna do that yet. But it is a cake factory, so we might do a little factory build, maybe like two little chimneys with smoke coming out, um, a little roof, maybe like a little elevated area, and we're gonna try to keep this exterior mostly, like mostly in the exterior, maybe just one or two sections where we go inside of the actual building, but it's not gonna have a full proper interior. Um, I think I have an idea on how to do this. So I'm gonna grab my blocks, and we're gonna see if we can make this look somewhat decent. Fresh cakes, free doubloons per slice. There we go. 
Yeah, uh, when it comes to the decorational part of doing the whole thing, I think that's probably the the most fun one because you can get a lot of a lot of good looking stuff onto the build very quickly, very easily. So we have a little cake display here, some signs, some like that, a little window there. Um, I added a tree. There's a tree here now. A little bit more of, uh, stuff needs to be done on it still, but uh, I tried a little different style. I think it looks pretty cool. We have the dark leaves on the bottom, the lighter leaves on the top. It's a simple, simple tree. Okay, friends, I think we reached a stopping point. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make this better at this point in time. We will definitely return to this place area and this build as well in the future, but for the time being, this is it. It is still functional, I hope. <laughs> Let's test it out here. We have one, two, three, four, five cakes. Press button. Six cakes. Very good. Press the button one more time. Seven cakes. Okay, nice. It works. <laughs> um, no, I wanted to probably cover this up. This little finger magic here. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna work. Oh, English! <laughs> you can tell that I've been whew, hard at work here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna walk around here. You guys can see how it looks. That's where the cow is. I added another chimney there. Uh, the tree is kind of finalized for now. I added a little bit of texturing to the bottom there still. Uh, not too many super high details because I do want to like have some stuff around here as well. If you're wondering what this is, by the way, there's a little special thing of mine. There's a jack -a boy guy with a jack o' lantern. Not just a any jack o' lantern. If he would look at me. For but a split moment, you would be able to see that it is a glowing jack-o'-lantern. How is that possible? I'm not gonna tell you. I added a few of these doors for redstone access in case I wanna check on the insides easily without breaking blocks. This is how we get to the wheat area. And this part is probably my least favorite. It's kind of wacky. I don't really like that it looks that way. I'm also missing a ball there. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna add that in a bit. Another redstone. Access door, bit of a display for the cakes for people coming in and buying them. And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Now it is time for me to clean up this huge mess that I made. <laughs> it's gonna take a second, but luckily, thanks to the automatic sorting here, that's gonna make it a little bit easier. Anyway, that is gonna be it from me for today's episode. Uh, yeah, I think the goal of learning how the craft works successfully... Um, it was indeed successful, so in the future maybe we will make this entire area over here actually just a bunch of contraptions for crafter based stuff. I already have a couple other things in mind, so we might return to here relatively soon. I do have some fun ideas, fancy schmancy stuff, some of it useful, some of it not so much. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it, have a wonderful day, take care and bye-bye!